Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. All right, here we are, Jackie. Here we are. That's right. Uh, so last night, uh, during the first show in Denver, the oh, one of the openers who will be a future comic of the week because I've already quoted four of her jokes to Andy, and she was only she was she did. I think she did four shows because Comedy Works does different local comics per show. Mm-hmm. And she was only doing sevens, I think. And I quoted four of her jokes. Wow. Shit. So you Damn. you will enjoy Georgia, who whatever her last name is, when I find oh out what that is. <laughs> I knew you were stalling. I'm like, why is she just in her name? She's stalling. <laughs> okay. Right. But Georgia also came up with a great idea, which is one of those oat uh, oxygen. Those little whippet things you can get at the gas station in Colorado when you're up in the mountains. Oh, I didn't know because, that. Yeah, because I, okay, so I got a cold last week in Portland, Oregon. Right. And I have not, don't have COVID. A week later, I still have a cold. And then I also am not particularly good at altitude. I've never okay. been good at altitude. Right. But it took me three days to remember that I could go just do hits of oxygen. From oh, a, a I didn't know that. Can they sell cans in the gas station? Oh, wow! And the grocery store for tourists and sea level sea level noobs like mm-hmm. myself. Sure. Yeah. So I didn't sleep good Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday night. But last night I slept pretty good because I had one of those cans. So uh, you, to, to perform in Denver, you need to uh, buy supplemental oxygen. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? No, because I did four. <laughs> <laughs> four of the five shows without supplemental oxygen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I did do, I did, but before I had the supplemental oxygen, I did a Dork Forest for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, lying down. Lying Ooh. down. Wow. Yeah, just me lying there telling, because uh, essentially Valerie Tossi uh, has a new comedy album out and it's called yeah. Beach Trash. Yeah. So every, everybody yeah. should look into that, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. And um, I wonder, I think it's on Blonde Medicine. I forget. But um, she um, she did uh, essentially destination dive bars. That was her dork dump. <laughs> wow. I'm, I, tell me more about laying down. I want to lay down right now. <laughs> finish out this yeah. podcast. In a yeah. Yeah. Lying down and, and doing a podcast would be great. But uh, I just got off the plane. I'm, uh, I'm in LA. I'm home for 10 days. And... I don't have, I don't think I have any work after April, March. You so know who, I'm going to have to look into like, that. <laughs> I have like sporadic that. work, you know, um, and, uh, and then I was listening to Chad Daniels podcast with Cy Almondson mm-hmm. and Chad's listing off his dates. And I was mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? This guy, yeah. he's, he's got dates through December yeah. and all over the place. Yeah. He's like every week it out. of the year. Yeah. Yeah, Crazy. he's grinding it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, I should figure out. I forget when I was. I was at. I was at Acme in July. Mm-hmm. So I suppose I should talk to Lewis <laughs> about coming back mm-hmm. um, this summer. Oh, were you, were you making a note to yourself as I was speaking? I saw you yeah. veer off. I did. Really I weeded off a little bit. I was like, Zzz, Chad Daniels. He's uh, <laughs> he's the inspiration for. The, uh, I was also talking to somebody about Nat Bargatze. Nat, Nat, Nate uh, Bargatze. That's it. Nate, I went to Iraq with him, you know. Oh, you did? Um, did Scott. you say his name correctly in, in Iraq? Or Nope. He was okay. he was even quieter in person okay. than he is today. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to hang out with Nate, <laughs> but it's, he's a quiet guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love a quiet comic. You know what? Off Thank stage? You. Yeah. Yes. You're like <laughs> jitter yes. chat. Sorry, I know you'll t- you'll take that as a personal attack, Jackie. But I always, actually, always, are you that's kidding not me? about you. It's uh, I could be super of somebody quiet. else in particular. If you if you'd that. like, I could be quiet for the next fifty eight minutes. <laughs> oh my god, that person! Yeah, that yeah. person would shut person. should shut up. Yeah, exactly. I would take ten Napragazzi's in a green room <laughs> over one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but so it was uh. That was a fun weekend. Again, though, uh, here's the weird thing. So people have lifted some mask mandates. Yeah. And the first thing I get is a freaking cold. And uh, yeah, coincidence? No, no, not. Turns out not at all. 
And, um, but I, I don't have COVID and I don't, and that's good. And the, how, when, works, when is the last time you tested? Um, I think it was Wednesday. Okay. So wow, that's a long cold. It's a really long cold. Cause I got it a week ago, Friday. Yeah. And so um, are you, say did seven you start to 10. taking your mask off? Uh, yeah, I, it turns out, um, I'm a chameleon and just want to fit in with humanity. <laughs> and so people around me are wearing masks. I tend to take them off as well. And, oh, uh, I was in a green room this week and I, and I was the only one with my mask on and then everyone put their mask on. And I felt like I was like a, just an old lady forcing everyone to <laughs> use grab bars, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's, uh, you could, if you don't want to wear a mask, I'm not gonna, I, I, I feel more comfortable mm-hmm. at the moment. When I'm in a at this time, people. Yep. Especially. Not in, not did you do sets? Did you do a bunch sets. of, did you do shows? Yeah, I did little shows here and there around town and they were fun. And um, uh, I felt I got like a new, like I've been searching for this one idea and it's not, it wasn't coming up. And then this joke has worked like three times in a row. And I'm like, oh, this could be the intro, the beginning joke of a chunk because it's got a couple ideas happening in it. So I'm kind of excited about that. That's awesome. I, because it was Denver and Denver is ridiculous in the fact that they play my albums all the time. So I am almost famous in Denver. Right. So I'm checking in and the, and the kid checking me in to the apartment. It's like, how do you spell your last name? And a stranger on the other side of the foyer goes, it's Cation with a K. No, it was easily the spookiest thing that has ever happened. Oh and, my god! And I was like, "Yes, it is, Jackie Cation." And uh, and he and he, I was like, and so the kid looked confused, and I was like, "My albums, they play them all the time here. I this is the only place I get recognized." And the guy, the the guy was like, "It's because you're great. Why don't you own it?" <laughs> and I was like, "Damn it!" Right. <laughs> I was like, hey, buddy, you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Does he know you're married? Easy, dude. Come on. <laughs> yes. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So it, it remains. I was, and I did radio. I did a couple of like local TV via Zoom. And then I mm-hmm. went into some heavy metal station with a guy named Big Willie and his sidekick, Scoop. <laughs> Of it was something from the nineties. <laughs> they were super nice. <laughs> were you in, Were you guys all in a room together? Were you separate rooms? We were all in a room together. No masks. Okay. okay. No masks and um and just telling stories. Sure. Old school radio morning yeah. radio. It's uh, then, wait. So Big Willie's obviously a guy. Is Scoop the funny the the woman who laughs? Uh, too hard at every joke to make that man feel better they they did not have the obligatory third uh lady janet (laughs) 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 they just had the two dudes and they were both really nice actually they were uh they were very funny it 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 was more a joke about uh morning radio than uh, those than that specific yes Yes. Yes, entirely and i will say the doggo is happy to see me and has come to visit me hello gordy how you doing, buddy? Oh, and um, Ugh, I hate this. What do you hate? Sentimental <laughs> <laughs> happiness. Look, um, uh, I uh, so it's, I, I listened to the Roy Wood Jr. Uh, episode of WTF. Oh, okay, it's so good, it's great. Um, but like. So Marin starts his thing and he's also talking, he's, you know, throwing out his dates and I'm like, just, you know, <laughs> right, just have, right, right. Just living in, in envy. Yes. And, uh, yeah. But he's also, he also said sales are soft in some areas, which really mm-hmm. surprised me, including San Francisco, where he uh-huh. lived for like 10 years. So, right. Um, and then some other big names have been like doing day of, Hey, there's still tickets left for this show where I'm like, wow, that's really shocking. Cause I mm-hmm. wouldn't have expected this person to sell out, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Just, uh, a, 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 still a tough time. I think um, it very, very much is. It was, I sold out one show yeah. in Denver and I think it's been established that, uh, I'm famous. There. Yes. So, uh, but the rest of it, like the second show Friday and Saturday, they were, and I, and I, uh, Ari Shafir was at the downtown one. Yeah. And, um, 
Mel, who is the PR lady, was like, he is selling like hotcakes. And I was like, this is not something I want to hear. <laughs> that, that the I other the other club is, is, is I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting, I'm doing what I can. And, mm-hmm. um, and then I was talking to um, somebody, either one of the local comics or the manager of the club. And he was like, um, whoever it was, was t- telling me that the, the, the uh, Comedy Works South is actually 150 more seats. Than the oh, downtown the one club. you were in? Yeah, the one that I'm in oh. is, is 450. Oh, okay. That makes and a the, difference. Yeah, and the one downtown is uh, 280, 300. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. So I um, felt so much better. So, yeah. but I do think, I do think that crowds are still light crowds are still kind of coming back but not right. and it is weird because bigger names are having a harder time filling the rooms just as much as anybody right yeah i mean they're playing bigger venues so and it's getting you know which means they like as roy predicted during the beginning of the pandemic roy wood and this uh, article they'll start working the smaller clubs because they can fill those they don't have to and then you know other headliners get pushed out of the smaller clubs you yep. know Yep. So, but maybe that's just temporary and maybe, maybe, uh, well, isn't, who fucking knows? Isn't yeah. everything temporary? Really? It act, uh, <laughs> including my avoidance of sugar. That is a uh, quickly. Oh my God. Have you heard Maria's new joke about what if I quit flour and sugar? I always wonder to myself, would I ever be able to stop talking about it? <laughs> and uh, it was the premise. <laughs> it's such a great premise. Are it's you still so- off sugar? Well, it's just so like, I, like, you know, I'll get a little, Ooh, I want to eat something. And then I'll be like, wait, I like, I'm not on a diet, but I can't have that or that. Oh, but I could have this tuna. <laughs> like, No, not when you want a cookie. Yeah. Yeah. There has I to think be another it's contributing to my current depression, but I, I just want to see if it if it, give it a little more time and see if it makes a, any sort of market difference in how my knee feels. That's all. Oh, right. Right. Um, Cause you got knee issues. Yes. I, uh, so I, but wait, 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 oh, go ahead, please well, table that. Cause I was talking to me. So Roy, so, so Marin starts listing all of his dates. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, you better come. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this. And he was saying like, you know, he felt like his last special was his best and he's feeling like maybe done, you know? And then Roy, in the interview with Roy, Roy, Roy's like, I think I'm going to take a little time from stand up and just not, you know, do something else. And it's like, I, I was like, I, I, I probably should be in that place too, but I'm not because I haven't had that level of success. Like, I swear to God, industry, if you just give me a few things I want, <laughs> I'll fucking go away. I won't keep wanting them. Okay. I promise, I promise you. you, I will quit. I if promise. People just give me a Netflix special. Jesus it's, uh... Christ. <laughs> like, I can't even let myself go to that place because it's like, oh, then everyone, net, the industry won, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want, anyone to, I don't want it, anyone to win. It got what it wanted. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would say this. I was, I mean, how old is Roy? I mean, and, and like, Marin, are I they already? under 40 or maybe he's right around 40. Roy Wood Jr.? Maybe 45-ish? I don't know. I don't know either. That was hence my question. I'm going away to check. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to guess 30 to 40, 48. That's my range. Uh, 43. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I mean, so, when I was 43, I was like, uh, I, uh, no, I was not in that place. But I also hadn't had three hours on Comedy Central in five years. You know what I mean? You would well, be just like, I'm done. I've got nothing else. Right, right. Because you've been bled of all of your premises. Yes. I mean, yes. in three, if you have to do three specials in, four, in or in whatever, five years, many years, five years, where do you get more material? I literally, so I, I actually brought a set list up of brand new premises yeah. <laughs> to work this weekend and wow. and yeah because and not brand new i mean stuff that i've been sort of yeah half half ass working on i'm like no i'm working on all of these because all of the people in the audience have heard all of my shit oh that that is maddening to go up on stage knowing that knowing that and then going all right well we're gonna work on this material then and then yeah. those of you who have seen this material feel free to nod along and be happy that you know where this joke is going. And then those of you who have never heard it. 
I hope you find it uh, entertaining. So, um, yeah. And so I told did Jackie, did you add a little pizzazz in your act outs just to give the people something else? Yeah, I'm doing, there I'm you doing go. Some, some mime now. I'm yeah, doing a little like, bit of, yeah. Sure, you've seen this joke, but you haven't seen me do it like this, the old uh, razzle dazzle. Right, you haven't seen the shouty wiggly version of it. Watch, it's like, it's Dane Cook 93, just gonna <laughs> jump around. Hopefully we're doing stand up in the round. Make and, it different, uh, sure. But, but yeah, I mean, the, the, but the audiences were so great. The, the people who opened for me, it was so eclectic and sort of like the way they do it, there's an MC, Mm-hmm. And the MC, this guy, who is a veterinarian, and uh, oh, is that Kevin Fitzgerald? Yes. Okay. Yes, he had eleven seasons on Animal Planet. Yeah, he's like I've I've heard of him since I started comedy. He's sort of legendary, the veterinarian comedian from Denver. And right, I'm like, and so he hosted. Do? He hosted, and I was like, "How did you become a veterinarian?" Because he has all veterinarian jokes, and they are freaking hilarious. He's actually yeah. a wonderful comedian. He yeah. actually re- remember that that book, All Creatures Great and Small. Yeah. Um, I never watched the TV show, but I always pictured that guy, Dr. Kev, as yeah. uh, the veterinarian. Yeah. And so, but he told me that Keith Richards paid for his, for him to go to veterinarian school. What? Yeah, he was, what? him Him and his brother were both bouncers for the Rolling Stones and Linda Ronstadt and a bunch of different places. And he was talking to Keith Richards and he had done it like, like for seven years in a row. And I guess Keith Richards said to him, hey man, your brother's kind of an idiot, but you are smart. Wow. What do you want to do? And he said, well, I've always thought about becoming a vet. And Keith Richards was like, get your act together. I'll pay for it. <gasps> that's incredible. What a weird, and that's just one story. Like Dr. Kev, I guess, has like 13 of those stories. Oh my God. Where you're like, like he was telling us about hosting for Linda Ronstadt one time. And, and, and some, I don't, it was like, he, he would like drop these like amazing stories in the you, middle you of know the green room. Is- Stories like that is Gonzo, Dr. Gonzo. Oh, yeah. He's actually not a doctor as, as opposed <laughs> to Dr. Kev. But I think he's he stopped doing stand-up a long time ago. Like he moved to a small town and became the mayor of the town. <laughs> but he was like in the 80s, he was like the comic that opened for music acts in the Bay Area. And because yeah. he he it was like a he was a guitar comic, but he was really funny. And yeah. um, yeah. Uh, I there's it's so rare to have comics from that era not be you know dead from overdoses or, right it's you know, nice it's uh, nice feel free it, to die of old age yes. yes yeah 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 so that's cool yeah and then uh you know the hippie man john yes yeah yeah yeah, he, yeah. he did a feature set um i think one night two two shows one night and then a guy named talon Talon Saucepan? What the fuck is this guy's name? What? It wasn't Saucepan. It was what Sauce something. I don't know, but he was from South Dakota, and he was he was kind of he's he's very much a kind of a broy dude. Yeah, but he's super likable, and but he's also doing like he's doing these weird jokes that are kind of sexist, but he's also his heart's in the right. You know, you're just like you are a caricature <laughs> of like the '80s and 2022 all in a very nice package that's Super cool nice and georgia was really great and yeah i had a really good time with uh, just fun. watching these other com- the local comics yeah there's such a great scene there you know yeah and uh, jeff tice stopped down david right. rodriguez did not but uh yeah, yeah. cool sounds like uh, sounds like a lot of fun yeah it was great uh, except for that i had this this cold and altitude sickness so i never went anywhere right so it's the second weekend in a row where I'm in the, a town that I want to go hang out, mm-hmm. but I can't go anywhere. You didn't and do it coffees snowed. or anything? Mm. No, I didn't do any. And uh, the the hotel, the apartment that they put you up in, it's got like the view of the mountains mm-hmm. is uh, amazing. The Rocky and, Mountains? Yeah, the Rocky wow. Mountains are right there. And then one floor below where my where where the the apartment was was an outdoor hot tub with giant wow. torches, but it was 20 degrees. And I was like, I have a cold. I can't. <laughs> I can't go out. I'm just going to go into the bathtub here. <laughs> so, but um yeah, so it was the second week, but I'm home for like a week and a half and then I do DC, Washington DC, the DC loft, I guess which has been pushed at least three times in the last two and a half years. Oh, wow. 
Um, yeah. All right. We should, I'll, you know what? After at the end, I'll plug my dates. So pe- Please. here's the thing. When people plug their dates at the beginning of their podcast, it's hard to listen to the podcast because I'm, I'm just... <laughs> And just, and just so upset. Uh, yeah. Did you make a note to yourself? Who books yes. the DC law? Yes. All and, of uh, <laughs> um, so, okay. So I was going to tell you though. So I'd worked okay. on all this new stuff. Yeah. And traditionally, I don't think I've ever done any jokes about weight, right? Cause you're talking about sugar yeah. and I've gained a bunch of weight in COVID. And so literally I have like one joke about it and about okay. the committee meeting going on in my head about it. And I remembered, I think when I first started, I did some sort of, I did an obligatory kind of self-deprecating fat joke, right? Mm -hmm. In the eighties, maybe in the early Mm nineties, but I stopped pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it didn't serve. And then I, so I was doing this, this joke about gaining this weight at COVID. And I remembered why I stopped doing that. Uh, A man came up to me after the show. Oh, uh, first show uh, last night. And he was like, I just want you to know, I'm going to, I'm going to DM you. I'm a doctor. Oh. If you ever want to lose weight, I can help you. Oh my God. And no. I was like, oh, that's right. That's why I never talk about this. Oh shit. no. <laughs> oh man. Uh, are your DMs open by the way? They are. No, they should be closed. I would like, uh, I've just, I, I want to, because of all of my problems, because mm-hmm. of that troll business I have, that heckler, mm-hmm. I literally just, I want to go hide in a compound, but I don't have the income for it. Right. So, um, but we will see. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I, um, I, I was at the improv last night. I was on uh, Fielding oh. at Low Show, Eat, Pray, nice. Fuck. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. I had her set in the main room, right? So on the, on Fielding Show, Jody Miller, I was watching, she has, she, she has a daughter, right? She adopted her daughter. Okay. And I mean, first of all, just, do you know how hard it is for a single female comic to go through the adoption process? It's like, that is amazing. That is amazing. So it happened, but it happened. Like, I remember her talking about this years ago and just thinking, can't believe she did it. Yeah. And it worked. It sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. And she, the material she has about it is so funny. And I've never, I don't think I've ever heard of a, anyone talking about it like that, talking about motherhood from that angle. And it's that great. Is, and that's so cool. It is really cool. Really dark, really, really funny. Um, that's awesome. So I don't know. I was just like, God dang, that's great. So if you have a chance to see Jody Miller, you know, okay. Go see did her. you, did you know Chrissy Haberman? That sounds familiar. She's, uh, I did open mic with her, bought a joke from her once about 20 oh, yeah. years ago. She, is she, she died, uh, uh, unexpectedly. Oh my God. Uh, last week. Yeah. Is she from, a Minnesota comic? A Minneapolis? No, no, here. LA comic from the oh, LA, no. um, open mic scene and super dark, super funny. I bought a joke from her at one open mic, probably 20 years ago that I've never been able to use, <laughs> but, and I, and it was probably the first joke I ever bought from mm-hmm. anyone and I've only bought a handful but um it was she Chrissy Haverman so so funny so sweet and funny and um it was oh she had run into an Armenian guy mm-hmm. and she said that he he smelled of fake Giorgio in the cold war <laughs> and uh I was like can I buy that <laughs> <laughs> that's great and uh so her we're gonna have sort of a memorial next Saturday for her oh man and I don't even know what happened all I know is she we, one day we were all sort of trying to pray and give a shout out to some sort of God you believe in. And she was in the ICU and then she just passed away. So ah. super dark, super dark. Chrissy Haberman. Great, great comic though. Too bad. Um, Sorry yeah. That. Yeah. Um, hmm. Other than I, that. <laughs> I, I watched um, Ali Wong's special uh, called oh. Ali Wong and it's really great. Oh, good. And it's like, it's so weird, like seeing Jody talk about her, situ- her, her motherhood stuff. And then Allie barely mentions it. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, that's so, I'm like obsessed with that decision. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I know you have two kids. She has two kids. I know how hard it must be. And for there's me, there's no like, material there that, that, that feels like a seriously rich vein. Like why? Well, it's a vein she's choosing at the moment, not to really mine on stage. 
you mm-hmm. know? And, and I'm like, that's, that's so cool in a way because it's, it's, to, I, and maybe this isn't why she's doing it. Maybe she, she, you know, she's famous. She doesn't want any, doesn't want to bring her kids into it. That may be why she's doing it. But it, what it kind of looks like from here is that she's sort of like, I'm a woman. I'm me. I'm not, you know, if you think of me as a mother, fuck you. This is how I want you to think of me. And, okay. And so she, she's and, sort of defining herself on stage. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. As not a mother, but just as her own person. Maybe, maybe because the first two special she's pregnant in. So maybe, maybe it's that. But even the second one, she barely mentioned that she was pregnant. It was just very <laughs> nice. But I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was so interesting. And then that I remember like before when she's before she married, maybe she had this chunk about how she wanted to get married because she didn't want to work. And it was just so, it was like this aggressive chunk about, I don't want to work. And it was like, who says that with, you know, and <laughs> like now I, think I remember that. Yeah. But, and then, I remember how that wasn't helpful. Yes, no, and, but, but it was funny. And yeah. now she's in, now she's talking about how her husband doesn't work. Like she, <laughs> she gave her husband the life that she wanted for herself. It was really funny, but it also hearkened back to her original premise as a reason of its get existing as a comic in a way that's kind of like really how she how right. she uh how she uh, articulated who she was you know it was, yeah. very, it was really good oh my gosh that's uh, awesome. je recommend recommend yes. uh i saw some post on facebook that one of the younger comics had posted that she saw it but she didn't like it and it wasn't her and all the all of the comments it was hunt i can't remember it's one of the younger ones that I did. I don't know her. I think she's just, she's just kind of coming up. She's working yeah. mics and stuff. And um, <laughs> there's like 55 comments. Did you have a point? Uh, if, <laughs> if you don't like it, that's fine. And it's like, do you know what, what are you doing? And it was really a very funny thread of, yeah. did you want to work in this industry? Are you just going <laughs> to randomly say you don't like things? You know, it's very weird. So yeah, uh, sure. I just got um, the screener for Ted Lasso. Pretty proud of that. Pretty psyched about that. Second season of Ted Lasso. Looking forward to looking at that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I have Apple TV. Oh, I, I don't have, have that. Plus yeah. whatever. I have it, Jackie. I spent $10 a month on it. I have All right. it. Well, pardon me. Well, I like the hair flip. That's Thank you. Important. Well, listen, I was on television <laughs> last night. Were you? I did MSNBC. Like, oh my gosh. That's right. Yeah, on um, Amon's show, uh, and but Michael, the he was who was the guy filling in was Michael Steele, okay, who was the uh, chairman of the Republican National Committee during the Bush, during the Bush years, and yeah. maybe during the Bush years a little carry up during Obama as well, I think, but um, but he's like an anti anti Trumper. Oh right, right, right. The never Trump. Yeah, yeah. And the pan, the other person on the panel was Jennifer Rubin, who's also a Republican con- columnist, who's an anti-Trumper. Mm-hmm. And then um, another one was the other panelist was a columnist named Hayes. Uh, I forget his last name. I, I don't think he was a Republican, but it was just <laughs> MSNBC is really all in on anti-Trump stuff. Yeah, and as you know, and they're providing plenty of uh, you know what's happening now with Trump right this this week has been really shocking. You know, like with. Um, his accountant uh, saying basically uh we don't we disavow anything that we had anything to do with him (laughs) uh he's they're gonna have to they're gonna be subpoenaed they're gonna have to or they're they have to i don't i'm not using the right legal term but they're gonna have to speak in a deposition okay he deposed he uh ivanka and don jr about their business practices like lying about how much money that their billings were making um, anyway, it's like a big deal this week, you know? Okay. And uh, so maybe that's why it was all Trump stuff, but I, I cannot write another Trump joke. I just can't. It's so right, right. They, And then they had you come on and right, you're but, supposed to riff on anti-Trump jokes. Yeah. I mean, you know, like they give you the topics ahead of time. And so I just okay. wrote some jokes on each thing, but, but I could tell like, it was like, oh, the comedian's here to talk about Trump. And I was like trying to take things in a different direction. Just, just <laughs> it's so boring to me, Trump. But the other, the other thing that's funny, 
funny and it just like where you know it's it's not a remotely ideal situation for a comedian right yeah it's like so like he throws to me on a topic and then I start you know doing my jokes and then they they start putting up full frame graphics that have nothing to do with my joke so like you can't it, you know it it it's uh does, does this stuff pay no 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 oh okay it's all exposure uh, but, exposure yeah, yeah I guess so and uh it's just they're used to you know, they will throw up a graphic that supports the rant that a that a a, a pundit is going on, but it, it kind of works against comedy because you need to listen to the joke. <laughs> so it's like, whatever, it's fine. I, I have no complaints. It's fine. But um, and oh, and then I couldn't get my uh, computer to work. Like it was like that nightmare thing of all right, we're on in one a minute and a half. Are you are you yeah, okay? Yeah. And it's like rebooting super slowly and doing the, you know, the beach ball. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, fuck. So I do log on from my iPad and hold it in this really awkward position. And so instead of looking at my notes, I was like holding the iPad and it was just, there's a lot yeah, going on. Not, not ideal, not ideal. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you did get to do some, some stage time. That's kind of cool. That's, uh, yeah. Nobody ever asked me to, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So, hey, do you want to do a break? And no, what if I said no? What about comic of the week? Oh, let's do a break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then let's do, you know, uh, that was the thing is uh, I was like, who we haven't we done that we talk to all the time? Well, I figured everyone we know we've done. That but clearly is not so not because so. this week's comic of the week, and I'm going to say her name wrong, is Holly Linnea. Lin Holly Linnea. Holly Linnea. Linnea. Okay. Yes. It's L-A-N-N-E-A. -N -N -E I know that, right? Correct? L-Y. No, you don't. <laughs> L-Y-N-N-E-A. I mean, you're an abomination. Uh, <laughs> I, I am an abomination and we're clearly we close friends. We, Georgia, we what's your now. last name? Holly, <laughs> let me just to throw vowels together. Uh, no, we're, we're in a, we're in a, got a pretty large lady comic chat. Anyway, um, but she's hilarious. She's, she's hilarious. Uh, out of Louisville and, mm -hmm. uh, or Louisville, maybe I don't pronounce it. So Louisville, <laughs> Louisville, <laughs> Louisville. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, she's, she's great. She opens for Chelsea Handler and Gary Gallman and uh, DL Hughley. And uh, she's really funny. And she uh, just opened know, for Posehn. Hmm? Yeah, she just opened for Brian Posehn. And, oh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really smart really funny and mm -hmm. um and clearly i need to um get her last name right but how do yes. you spell it kyle it is boo -boo. twitter it's a at ho it's, so it's just how you spell her name so it's at h-o-l-l-y-l-y-n-n-e-a two and y's you guys yeah she also has that i think it's a kentucky thing like that soft southern accent it's, it's not real like, nice it makes it's everything not like funnier. real hard <laughs> where, yeah, yeah. where you you need it you know a translator it's just like a soft <laughs> one and it's like oh i just want to listen to her mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome she yeah so find her safe. <laughs> yeah uh book her and pay her right you guys can do it <laughs> sure so, yeah all um, of i have sets this week yeah go ahead Oh, I do too. I have sets in town this week. Um, yeah. yeah. I got to get more though. I only have a couple on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I have like a West side at improv and um, I might have a flappers, but I, I want all of them. I would like, and I saw that hot tub is back for real. Oh, Hey, cool. At the Virgil. And they're going to be checking at the door Vax and boost. Oh, mm. good. you got to be all three. <laughs> Which is easy enough because, uh, like, it's in my Apple wallet now. You know, I could just go, you know, show everybody. Oh. Yeah. Is there, how do, you, how, do you, how do you label it like that? Do you, how does your Apple, do you have to? It did it automatically. And now on my iPhone, if I look for my wallet, it just shows up as one of the tabs. That and my Starbucks card. Very exciting. I don't That's know what good I'm doing because with my I Apple keep wallet. scrolling through pictures of my neck as I'm tracking the damage as I age to get to my vaccine card and it's becoming embarrassing. Oh, the neck it's back. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, um, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I'm not on the road again for another 10 days and I don't know what I want to do. I know I want to do a lot of local sets, mm -hmm. but I also kind of don't want to leave my room. Cause why, I've got why this Why not cold. just hunker down for a couple days, hang out with your man and your dog and yep. uh and then venture out again it'll be and then you have been on the road a lot i and have you've been sick on the road so you should be under the covers for a little while 
All you right. Know? Are you hoping to pick up the sets that I might take? Yes, that's yes, exactly that's what I'm saying. I was like, I um, thought that was the long game. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the long game. I was, I was like, are you sure? I think you should cancel Denver uh, at the very last minute. And uh, <laughs> I, I invoked your name at least three times. I was like, Thanks. if you guys, you guys, uh, you know, Lori Kilmartin. Right. You know, Lori, come on. And, uh, You're you, like, you yeah, your- we are aware and we are not interested. No, not enough of that going on. They got to, I got to get you out there. Cause you would, you would fucking, of course it would destroy. It would be. Fun. Did you see that Rontowski moved to help with their parents? Yes. And we yeah. did not get to, uh, Take her out to lunch. before nope. she left, which was, uh, I mean, I guess it's, uh, it's really hard to get comics together. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um, have, but we should have thought of it earlier for sure. We should, for sure. Or, or done, I should have done something when you mentioned it. I should have been more proactive. Mm-hmm. Drop the ball. And, but, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched about, about some of the, so, some of the new material, which I, which, which I've been working on, which is pretty great. And, um, we we had a Max Fun show last last weekend that was cool. Oh yeah, we did for our Max Funners. We yeah, we did a, a, a Max Fun Zoom for our Patreon. So we we uh, we like to do that for the people that support us financially. Thank you, people, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you were thinking about <laughs> supporting us financially, there might be a random Zoom show that you can just <laughs> you'll get an email and you're like, "What are you doing? What are you doing oh. tomorrow?" Here are all uh, Jackie's new premises for God's sake. Yeah, please. I would also like, I don't know. I, I, uh, I want to sort of figure out, like, I, I, I mean, I'm no Mark Marin. I don't want to quit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't <laughs> I just had to do some sort of, um, some, some interview that this, you know, how like, they're like, tell us what, what it was like, how you started comedy, who your favorite people, the, the same five questions. Right. Yeah. And, um, one of the questions was, what was it? It was something like, so do you think that, did, when, when did you first realize that the comics were your tribe? And I was oh, like, man. if I heard the word tribe one more time, I'm going to cut myself. Uh, we're not a, it's not, we're not a tribe. We're more like a family that you're forced to hang out with. So you hate <laughs> some people and you love some people. And then you love some people that you hate just because you hang out with them so much. <laughs> and, uh, and that is a family. That is not a tribe. It might be a community. We but, should come uh, up with a good collective noun for comedians. Uh, oh, like a murder of crows? A nausea like of comedy. Ooh. <laughs> a nausea of comics is pretty great. <laughs> nausea? <laughs> I don't know why. Some people make me sick. No, I, looked at, <laughs> I, I, I just looked at a, a few club lineups while we, they were texted to us in our lady chat. And it's like, uh, shocking. It's like at least 15 weeks, the full 15 week uh uh calendar is all male comics a couple yeah. sex offenders it's just it's unbelievable i wouldn't it be cool and they'll never do this because everyone's just trying to make their own money in a pandemic but if the male comics who are cool who do work these clubs and see that there's no female headliners go hey why don't you book some women? like say something right i don't even think those 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 headliners who are a big deal and good guys even yeah. bring women features You know, like one of the things, like, I'm not really bringing um, my own features yet, but what I like to do when I freaking remember, and I mostly usually remember is I usually like to say, could you get not all straight white guys in front of me? Mm -hmm. Just because, because, you know, get the local somebody, somebody black or brown or a woman or a trans or gay or some fucking thing just to mix it up. Cause I'm already a, un- uh, a unicorn but let's you know let's make a let, let's make it inclusive yes. for even more people but it would be great if all the shows would do that or if, mm-hmm. if, if if you didn't bring your own opener if you just said that if you were mm-hmm. a straight white guy right mm-hmm. yeah for sure um have you okay so i bet i was watching cameos because uh you know because oh, maria joined they were making money on cameo well yeah maria joined cameo and it's so funny because she was uh she had some sort of, um, she, she had like a financial, uh, she was worried about money for some, for some reason. And she's like, I think I could make it up in cameo. And I was like, no, no, I don't. Not unless you're planning on doing 60,000 of them or whatever. Right. I don't know right. how many, 
but she's actually having a really good time doing them. If it's fun, why not? You why know? not? Are you kidding me? She said she was having a blast. She's done like 40 of them, she said. Shit, that's a lot. It is a lot. And only one person asked her to redo it, I guess. Oh, wow. That's cool. I don't yeah, think it's cool that anyone asks anyone to redo shit. <laughs> uh, just, I mean, you get, what did you give her? A hundred bucks? She did something for you. Back off. Yeah. Um, I watched, I just watched a couple. Uh, I watched hers and I watched Sydney Battle has a really, she does a character, she does a character called Brooklyn Mom. And yeah. a, an insane mother. Uh, it, it's really a funny character. And um, old timey Brooklyn mom or hipster no, Brooklyn mom? No, no, mom? no. A very much of a Park Slope Brooklyn mom. Okay. Who, yeah, uh, yeah. With a $1,500 stroller and all those things. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also just a crazy person. Uh, just <laughs> not even all stereotypes of it's like it, new shit that it's like you, like she secretly observed some weird behavior. Anyway. Her, her things are funny. Deborah D. Giovanni's were really funny. Jim Norton. I watched Jim Norton's. They were, they were fun. They were, they were him, you know, like, and Andy Kindler. It was just funny. Everyone's just sort of being a version of themselves. I'm and like, I haven't seen some of these people in a long time in person. I'm like, oh my God. Norton. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Did Colin Quinn doing one? You I should look see. up, you should look up all the guys from, from the old tough crowd days and go, oh, I wonder if that guy's doing them. And it would be a way to sort of reconnect because you hung out with them for years. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you sure. Know. Uh, so, some have died. Some have headed down crazy roads. Like some of them are like, Ooh, I don't want to know what's happening. Right. Right. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Let but us I was keep, looking up keep Olympic our memories too. And, um, you know, just seeing uh, if I can get some inspiration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they doing them in the pool? No. I want Dara to, Torres I, is like uh, Dara Torres is like our age, and okay. up, up until like maybe two Olympics ago, was still competing, and she's an okay. incredible sprinter. So she was doing some, and uh, then it was like younger swimmers. But I'm like, where's Tracy Hawkins? Where's Mary T. Maher? Where's my generation? Who's ever heard of any of these people? How <laughs> fucking dare you? How dare you? You should, everyone should know who Tracy Hawkins is. She got robbed <laughs> by the uh, 1980 boycott. She would be as famous as Michael Phelps. She was that dominant and that good. And four years later, she wasn't as dominant. Like, you know, sometimes you just have that one season where you're the best in the world at everything. You can't That's hold a window. on for four years. Especially athleticism. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to hold on to stuff athletically. Well, I was only talking about athleticism. What are you talking about? I I started thinking about stand-up again. Yeah. Oh. Because um, that's where I went. Uh, what are you thinking about, Jackie? Stand-up. Uh, what, what do you think about now? Hmm stand up so i wish i had another i wish i had a another life. thing no wonder you have a podcast where you ask other people uh, people about their interests because you right? have none valerie tossi is like i want to talk about dive bars and then she talked about the most hipster dive bars i've ever heard of in my life and i was like wait you're not talking about like the dive bars like where my mom hung out before she was killed. No, Jesus. you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, that's a dive bar where people go to give up and, and there's no cameras. It's just, it's like, literally, I'm just, I'm yeah. four years old eating maraschino cherries and my mom's trying to get laid playing pool. And uh, that's a dive bar, you know, career drugs. That's what I wanted to. I love but it. So, Have you, is that bar still open by the way? Frenchies? It is not. Frenchies. It was called Frenchies. <laughs> oh my God. And she brought, did she bring you there? Yeah, yeah. No, I, what do you think? I drove myself. I was four. No, uh, you no, were there yeah. eating cherries at the bar? Yeah, yeah, just spitting. I've, 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 I have only like two or three memories of, of my life before the age of seven. And one of them is me sitting at Frenchie's spitting, watching her ass play uh, pool and me eating uh, essentially the fruit on the bar. Your mom was so close to being a mom comic. Like all she, <laughs> she was so close. Bringing her kid to the bar. So close. Oh, well. Has, you know, I will say this about Ann Cation, Ann Ryan Cation. She had potential. She had so much potential that was ruined by the fact that she had six children between the ages of 16 and 26. Absolutely. So it's um, devastating. It's, um, yeah, and it's a great loss. 
I, I also have Ryan's in my family. What if we're related? I mean, it is a very common surname. <laughs> Super common, super common. Yeah. You probably, you would know though, because you would have followed them around and then you'd be like, what? Wait, so you're in Utica? Can you go look at the corner of 12th and Fremont? <laughs> see if there's a rock there that my great, great uncle might've pissed on. I'm, all I'm asking, is there an Emma Ryan in your background? Because that was my <laughs> great grandmother. Right. No? Gladys Ryan was my grandmother's name. Um, I don't know the name of my grandfather, my grandma Gladys. I have a great picture of my grandma Gladys and my grandma Cation mm -hmm. uh, sitting and they're both clearly kind of half in the bag <laughs> and uh, they're sitting at a kitchen table drinking Pabst, cans of Pabst, which way before it was cool. We're talking 1956, wow. 57. <laughs> so um, yeah. You anyway. know what? I think the next time we get asked who our influences were when we started comedy, we should start listing like newer comics like just to make ourselves look younger <laughs> like i i when i started i just looked up to marcella arguello so much and now yes you know who's really changed my uh who changed my life the first time i saw amy miller she made me really <laughs> want to yeah. do stand-up virginia jones i don't know if i can get to her Tristan. age and be as funny as she is now that'd be amazing <laughs> And it's I'm inspired by, well, I saw her do TikTok. I didn't even know she did stand up. And then I started doing stand up and I met her. And so, hey, let's do another break. Okay. Oh my God, does Gordy want to go inside? Um, yeah. Yeah, we have like 15 minutes, Gordy. Yep. Go lay down. Live it up, Gordy. <laughs> um, so, uh, what am I going to watch? I'm going to watch The Queens of Mystery on BritBox tonight, which oh, is- Oh, I've never heard of that. What is it? It's a British mystery thing about these three aunts and um, these three meddling aunts and their daughter, yeah. uh, their their niece is a, um, is a DI, is a, is, is a cop, British cop yeah. in a village. And there's always a murder. And, um, and they're, these four women are hilarious. And it's a very mm -hmm. silly, like it's a very silly murder mystery thing. And I've watched uh, four episodes of it, um, and there's not that many of them. There's only um, six in. There's two seasons. Yeah, and there are um, six episodes per season. I am watching Lady Parts on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu or Peacock. What's that? Oh, it's so good. It's British. Mm -hmm. It's um, a Muslim girl punk band. Okay, uh, taking place in the present and. Uh, so, so many funny jokes. I do wish they get to the music quicker. Like they do have, like they're doing backstories on everybody and it's okay. good. And I'm, I'm sure if, I, you know, if I was a Muslim girl, I'd be like, do more backstory. Like, please yeah. show yeah, me yeah. everybody. But I'm just like, come on, get to this. Their songs are great. Okay. And they're you, really but, fun. And I'm like more music, but, more music. Uh, I, but everybody totally else is probably like more representation. How did you get away <laughs> from your brother? <laughs> It's, it's really good. And uh, it's, awesome. uh, it's called Lady Parts. That's the name of the band. So um, check it out. And uh, I, what else? Oh, I ran into Chris Estrada at one of my gigs this week. And he, um, he did a show. He just finished taping a show, like completing yeah. like, 10 episodes that are going to start in July, start airing on Hulu in July. So awesome. Oh, I'm so proud amazing. of him. Just, just I'm, could I'm, not have. Sometimes the industry works, and it's yes! this one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he's a delight. He's truly really the good best people. of all of us in all the ways. Yes, like, yeah, I yeah. Love that funny man guy, today. and the premise sounds hilarious. It's like the fifth most successful, um, uh, uh, like. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what's, you know, homeboys industries where they like prisoners make cookies. Mm. Okay. I don't know what that kind of industry is called, but it's <laughs> the fifth most successful one in LA. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's him and Frankie uh, Quinones. And um, it just sounds so funny. And, uh, you know, all the people that the writers and stuff and the EPs that he was mentioning mm -hmm. are really good. And it's yeah. like, wow. It's going to be like so really good. Great. Oh, that's awesome. And it yeah. might be on Hulu, might be on Peacock. It'll be on Hulu for sure. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I guess they pitched it and then there was like a down year for it because of COVID and stuff. And they shot it all like in three months. They had all, obviously all the Damn. episodes written, had it shot it all. And he's, he's part Quick. of the editing process. It must be so cool to be 
to go through that, you know, and just have hands on the whole process, yeah. the whole way mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think if, you know, I mean, I think about the, the like when, when I do, when I do, when I did the one time somebody else shot something and got to pick. Yeah. Was um, they cut out punchlines and this is just stand up. Oh, right? is that this Comedy is like, Central? It was Comedy Central in 2003, a thousand years ago. But yeah. uh, they, you know, if you cut out a punchline, I'm going to appear to be a crazy person. <laughs> I know, and, uh, I know. <laughs> hate, hate, rant, 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 rant. <laughs> next topic, next topic. So dumbest thing ever. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, that uh, that comic, Georgia, she's from Nebraska. That was the joke they cut the punchline for. My, oh, my yeah, I remember. Nebraska truck joke. But uh, I wish I re could remember Georgia's last name. So freaking funny, man. She did this. Uh, God, it was just we'll stuff about it. being married. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to her. This time it's Holly Linnea. Mm -hmm. Holly Linnea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, okay. Queen Elizabeth has COVID. Uh, <laughs> I you know, that. I love the royal family. What a week this has been. Yeah. And uh, Prince Andrew settles. Prince Charles apparently uh, may have uh, given a Saudi billionaire a uh, citizenship, British citizenship in exchange for a million dollars donated to a charity that he runs. And now Queen Elizabeth has COVID. Wow, that's a big Crazy week. Shit. Yeah, big, big week. Big week for me on Twitter because I'm trying to look up all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, well, didn't, is she retiring from being queen? Did no, I read you don't. something you about die. that? That's how you retire. That's the only die. way you retire, right? Yes. You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can abdicate, but it seems late in the game for her to abdicate, doesn't it? It does. And the she became queen as a result of an abdication, which she she never wanted to be queen. You know, she right. was like the daughter of uh, King uh, Edward the Eighth's brother, George. Mm -hmm. I forget which number he was. Maybe the six. Mm -hmm. That guy was not supposed to. Do you ever see? Um, I forget the, the name of the movie. It's Colin Firth plays King George V. Right, right. And he stutters. And he's like super mortified. Oh, the and, King's yeah. speech. Yeah. The oh, King's what? speech. King's yes. speech. So they, they were never, they were just supposed to be a little rich family that lived in a cat, you know, on the countryside, <laughs> right. right? And Edward VIII was going to populate the, uh, the, the empire with awful children. But, uh, you know, uh, so her dad had to take over and then she had to be queen. And um, so I think she would never abdicate just because of that, just uh, because the monarchy, especially now, it's like it costs so much money. What's the fucking point to it? And when all these guys are getting away with this shit, like, you know, you, you at least need to not be an awful person if you're taking the public's money based on right. some sort of hereditary, you know, inheritance. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Some sort of weird patriarchy. Yeah. And uh... and, the, and the other thing is, um, so th this billionaire first approached Prince Harry, like in 2014, because he has a charity that uh, helps children with AIDS in a couple of countries in Africa, right? So, okay. you know, there, he's he seems like a good guy. He's looking for money to help these kids, right? Yep. yep. And then this billionaire starts acting sketchy. Like, I, he, Carrie's got to come to my house and post her pictures with my family. And he's like, uh, you know what? This doesn't feel right. So he pulls away from the guy and his father jumps in and uh, like, gives what do you the need? guy a what do you need? citizenship. <laughs> yeah, for a million pounds, that's not enough money. It's not enough. I mean, the thing is, if you're a billionaire, I'm going to want half a billion dollars if you're going to buy a citizenship. Um, first of all, no, as someone who has dual citizenship, Jackie, <laughs> again, another hair flip, you guys I'm outraged. It's uh... I didn't buy it. Okay. I mean, I had to find yeah, paperwork. Did. It was a lot of mailing. So there was, I'm sure there was at least $120 and then you had to fly to Luxembourg and kiss their not to, land, not to. right? Okay. Right. <laughs> Did you have to make out it. with the dirt? Didn't you? This have to is a very anti-Luxemburger tirade you've gone on at the end of our podcast, and I'm I'm sorry for you and our listeners. Do you promise it's the end of our podcast? You <laughs> <promise>? <laughs> nope, you're trapped forever. <laughs> Every fucking weekend we got to plan this thing. Get I know to it. plan this thing. That's it. That's what we're talking about. That's uh, Ambassador to Luxembourg via the Jackie and Laurie show. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i uh yeah, i want to i want to record a bunch of dork forests this week because i had to take last week off because i just the cold and 
Mm -hmm. I was just, I was in a, I was in a funk. I was in a funk. I was in a funk too. I even tweeted yeah. about it and got some concerned DMs from comedians. <laughs> right, right. I know. I, nice. I saw it. That is nice. Did you yeah. see, I, I reached out to the thread and, uh, oh. and, and, and it initiated a Zoom. I was like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And it actually saved, it, I, it saved my, don't forget to ask for help people. Yeah. Turns out I might be George Bailey. So, uh, <laughs> I might be George Bailey's wife. I might be George <laughs> Bailey and George Bailey's wife. So George Bailey's wife uh, went and asked for help at the end of its wonderful. Oh, life. that's right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So I want to be both George Bailey, the wife, and not the uncle. I don't ever want to be the uncle with the strings on his fingers. You know, <laughs> this riff requires a lot of knowledge of a movie I haven't seen in seven years. And I'm so um, sorry that there's no swimming in it. Uh, <laughs> All I know is that uh, George Bailey does, he does actually, there's some swimming. He falls through, Harry falls through. Yes, the ice. he does. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's a very, by the way, incredibly dangerous to have a pool hidden underneath. I mean, people could have died. I, as a former lifeguard, I, I have to say, I disapprove of that scene. <laughs> You're conflating two different scenes. The scene that I'm talking about is when they slide down the hill on the shovel and Harry falls into the ice. Oh, You're right. talking about when they're doing the Charleston. Yes. And, and, the, and, and the, the floor pool, separates. Yeah, the floor separates and the pool's underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was dangerous. probably a really very dangerous. I wasn't, uh, I bet you, here's what I think it is. It smells. You ever go to a Hilton Garden Inn where the ah. pool... Yes. <laughs> Kyle. Just, Jesus, it just, just flashed into my brain. Oh, yeah. a Hilton Garden Inn, they got to just take the pool out. Just take the pool out. Yeah, put I mean, it, they're put, too put small it, to swim in. Um, just make yeah. it a, a hot tub or, or something or jacuzzi, you know? Yeah, it, it just, it makes the whole foyer smell. And then if, if it has that in, you know, like it's usually five stories up or whatever, and they all mm -hmm. face that, that garden central pool area and so every yeah. time you walk out of your room it reeks of chlorine and it's slightly moist yes which i'm sure is nostalgic for you <laughs> uh, for the rest well, of us no it, it uh the mold smell is not nostalgic for me i swam and do swim in outdoor pools and uh so that's a very indoor pool problem in your um, pool problem jackie i want to blow please... everyone away with our uh with my dates I oh, want to do you press all the comics that are listening? Ooh. Oh, we are not going to Moon Tower. Are you going separately? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Because I, I got booked on the JFL tour in Toronto. And so it's like uh, 19th through the 29th of April. I'll be in Toronto uh, doing various dates at various clubs. Those will be posted at some point. And then um, at the end of March, March 30 through April 2nd, I'll be at the Punchline in San Francisco, my home club. Let's not have soft sales, folks. Right, Punchline, San Francisco, go out and see Lori Kilmartin. At That's the right. March 19th, I'm at Bay Salts in Bay Salts, Colorado at the Arts Campus. It's a Saturday night, one show only, and it's a three and a half hour drive from the Denver airport, all right? Make it worth my while. Oh, yeah. It's like near Aspen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It. It'll be pretty. And then when is um, yeah, you're coming up very soon. I'm in West Bend, Wisconsin, um, your home state. Uh, Who March knew there was 5th. comedy? Is one it just night one night only. as well? Okay. Yeah. At the West Bend Theater. Yeah. Oh, the Bend neat. Theater in West Bend, Wisconsin. All right. That is outstanding. Um, I want you to write uh, an autobiography called Indoor Pool indoor pool that's an indoor pool problem i think what did you just say it was very <laughs> funny anyway so um yeah my dates i i know that i at some point i'm i'm up in weed country humboldt county oh upcoming i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna try to fly out of um burbank but i understand that 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 airline has its head up its ass a little bit there's a there's a there's a flight burbank to humboldt county direct that's a nickel uh, oh but is it, it turns out yet it's it's got the name jet in it right West it might, jet might have the name air in it we don't know it's an air company it might have the name jet in it but whatever think, it is listen you you i'm sorry your flight was delayed and you're pissed okay i'm trying to help you <laughs> and help our listeners who might want to take this airline i think it's called, it might be called i thought it was called avio or something oh, oh i don't that's know a different one there's a Whatever lot of little tiny airlines trying to make it out of a Burbank. Burbank? Right? Well, here's what I want. I want them to actually make it. <laughs> yes. 